This is Ben Holcomb from Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering at UTS and Faculty of Engineering and IT. And this is a first video lecture for Mechanical Vibration and Measurement 48601 entitled Measuring Vibration. This is an introduction to vibration measurement and I'm going to quickly run through these slides adding a bit of narration just to highlight some of the important points. I don't want this to be an hour long video. This is intended to support the students learning and we will work through some of this content in class. Vibration is a particularly important thing for us to be aware of as engineers practicing in industry. Uh, it's uh, very useful for diagnosing the condition of machinery. Um, machinery that's working properly will have relatively low levels of vibration and for higher levels of vibration this uh, typically indicates potential problems such as bearing failures that may subsequently lead to catastrophic failure which we clearly want to avoid to maximize uh, production and efficiency of uh, machinery. Structures have got natural frequencies and these natural frequencies lead to vibration characteristics which we can determine the nature of. There are some very high profile occurrences of failures of bridges for example that have been caused as a result of poor engineering choices that have yielded natural frequencies at excitation forces that have caused the bridges to resonate and ultimately collapse uh, at great expense and risk to human life. And people are very susceptible, particularly at low frequencies, to vibration. So comfort and perception and things of this nature are really uh, very carefully uh, associated with vibration. So it's important when we engineer systems, particularly uh, air travel systems, uh, automotive uh, equipment, vehicles, trucks and so on, that we minimize uh, or that we at least uh, engineer the vibration levels to be um, to have a uh, reduced impact on the participants, uh, the uh, passengers of the vehicle and um, for those working with machinery, uh, handheld equipment and so on, these, uh, if the vibration level is particularly uh, excessive that, that can lead to a significant amount of ill health. As you know from previous work on this subject, when we are talking about vibration, vibration, we're typically talking about oscillatory motion and we describe that by way of sinusoidal motion, simple harmonic motion. We can talk about displacement, velocity and accelerations and these can be derived from one another by integration or differentiation and that's relatively simple using the chain rule such that we would for example, uh, be able to differentiate from displacement where displacement is the amplitude of the sine wave A multiplied by sine omega t plus phi where omega is the angular frequency and phi is the initial uh, phase of the signal. And to do that, we would use the chain rule, as I say, and we would have a resulting velocity of A omega cos omega t plus phi. So sine changes to cos and therefore we get an advance of 90 degrees of phase or pi by 2 and we get an amplitude of the velocity that's uh, the product of the angular frequency and the displacement amplitude and so on. If we ignore resonances and damping for a moment which occur in typical systems and just think about the way that velocity uh, relative to displacement and acceleration change as a function of frequency it's quite clear to see from the equations presented on the previous page that for increasing frequency velocity remains uh, relatively constant with respect um, to, to frequency whereas displacement amplitude uh, reduces significantly and acceleration increases significantly. Note that on this uh, on this plot the uh, both the amplitude axis uh, the uh, abscissa and the ordinate uh, the frequency axis are in the log scale and you can see the proportional or the linear line for increasing acceleration with frequency and uh, the uh, the reducing line with displacement. Velocity is therefore the optimum parameter to measure in a vibration context. On the next couple of slides we'll just take a quick look at what the optimum parameter to measure would be and why and of course we have various vibration sensors that enable us to measure either displacement or velocity or indeed acceleration. As you can tell from the previous plot displacement levels are pretty high at low frequencies but very quickly become increasingly small as we increase in frequency up to uh, frequencies of interest for human vibration which are between typically 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz so beyond 50 hertz displacement levels are really very low and therefore it's very difficult to make such measurements. One uh, 
Exception to that is that uh, displacements useful for measuring rotating shaft orbits in rotating machinery for whirl and so on. Uh, using uh, eddy current sensors, run out measurements can be made of shaft rotation of shaft um, orbits. Velocity is considered the optimum parameter to measure from a vibration standpoint, and there are some uh, systems that are or some sensors that are readily uh, available to measure velocity. However, acceleration is the one that's typically preferred, and we'll discuss that more on the previous on the following slide. As mentioned on the previous slide, acceleration is typically the parameter that's measured most readily in vibration measurements, not because of the fact that it's the optimum parameter to measure, that's actually velocity, because of the fact that the amplitude is relatively consistent across increasing frequencies of interest for vibration that's uh, of relevance to human, uh, for human um, perception. And um, However, acceleration sensors, accelerometers are very readily available, indeed ubiquitous, um, far better performance relative to other types of sensors, displacement sensors and velocity sensors for a certain price point. So they're good value, at precise uh, sensors. And of course we can integrate uh, for velocity once, uh, if we integrate once from acceleration we get uh, velocity and if we integrate again we can obtain a displacement parameter as well. At this point in the class, we'll do an in-class exercise.